Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for your kind words uh, about uh, our dear friend and colleague uh, Jimmy Spratt. Uh, the news of uh, Jimmy's passing was expected, uh, but still hit very hard uh, when I was told last Thursday morning. He had fought cancer in such a stoic way, with his wife Linda always by his side. But the fight had come to an end on Thursday morning, and it was time to leave this earthly world. Jimmy and I were not what a lot of people expected from DUP MLAs. He was a Presbyterian. Uh, I was an Anglican. He used to joke about that with Dr. Paisley and laugh when, I asked, uh, when Ian asked me how the Anglicans were, as if I could answer for the whole Anglican communion. We both joined the party uh, around the same time, and Jimmy's service in the RUC was also something which brought us together, as my father had served in the police as well. Jimmy joined the Royal Ulster Constabulary in 1972, when the IRA campaign of violence was at its bloodiest and he served in the police for 30 years. Towards the end of his time, he became the chairman of the Police Federation, as you have said, Mr. Speaker, and after being involved there for a number of years in other uh, functions. And he was a great advocate for his fellow officers. When he retired from the police, the desire to serve the community was still there. So he joined the DUP and was elected to Castle Ray Borough Council. He became group leader of the DUP team on the council after Peter Robinson left the council chamber, and he really enjoyed his role as a councillor and group leader. In 2007, he was elected to serve as MLA for South Belfast, and he held many positions in this place, as you have reflected, uh, Mr. Speaker, during his time here. He stepped down due to ill health in 2015, but he still kept a keen eye on what was going on up on the hill. When devolution returned to Northern Ireland in 2007, after the St Andrews Agreement, Jimmy and I sat behind Dr Paisley and Peter Robinson in that now famous photograph in the Long Gallery at Stormont, when the DUP leadership met the Sinn Féin leadership for the first time. Jimmy believed in devolution, and he knew the work and sacrifice that were needed to make it happen. He had lived and served through the troubles and seen the death and destruction it had brought. And he wanted to make Northern Ireland a better place for all. There were many challenges, there are many challenges in keeping Northern Ireland moving forward in the right direction, but he never shied away from that challenge. When I needed help, I rang Jimmy. I did not so not so long ago, and he was always willing to help, even when he himself was not well. He was an incredibly brave man, and he showed that bravery throughout his life, and not least in his final battle. I will miss his mischievous smile, the dry aside, the determined, clear counsel, but I am thankful to have had Jimmy as a friend and colleague, the kind of friend who thought nothing of jumping in a car and coming down a skill into canvas for a day. To Linda and the family, I send my love and prayerful support. We all know that there will be difficult days ahead, but there will also be days of joyful remembrance as well. Jimmy had a strong faith in the risen Lord as a saviour, and I watched his funeral service online yesterday, and I smiled when his minister, the Reverend Mark Brown, said that Jimmy had instructed him to leave people in no doubt about the need for salvation. And Jimmy was given clear advice, even though he had passed. I want to finish with two verses, if I may, Mr. Speaker. As the Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And Matthew 5, verse 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.